that I can't negate and consume. You know, I suggest that. You know, this is what I believe. This is my faith. I do share it with it. Talk to your leaders. How is your invisible dress? It's not raining out. How is your invisible dress? Yeah, next weekend we'll talk to our invisible friend again. <laughs> Say hi to your invisible friend. There's a game on this afternoon. Your invisible friend will be there to sit with you and watch the game. The Bible is the word of literal word of God. I didn't accept it. So, but it says also that uh, some uh, disagrees with God. So, okay, now now you're taking it out of context, right? So, is it out of context? To, to only take the positives is to cherry pick all the things. Oh, okay, like easy see. now. You're suggesting that I'm just taking parts of. I don't know. I'm Most taking. Christians, I, otherwise, they'd be killing everyone. All the, the, the word of God, but I'm, I'm suggesting that it is contextual too, right? Like the Bible is contextual. It's in, not what, just like in what context is it right to stone non-believers? In what context does that is that good? No, no. But you're suggesting you're, you're suggesting something like historical. But I'm suggesting. No, I'm not historical. I'm talking about what's in the Bible and what is the literal word of God according to you. Right? No, I'm, and, and, I'm, and I'm telling you, like contextually, I don't think the Bible the Bible is applied in different times in different ways. I mean, it's not. So you're saying in a different time it was right to stone non-believers? Well, that's a good question actually, and I'm going to be honest. I don't really know that part. I mean, there are elements that I say, is that contextually now, is this what God would say now? Like, to stone non-believers? Mm -hmm. If he's suggesting in like a metaphor, like, now it would be like speaking <laughs> with words? Is, if it was is a metaphor, he sure a, confused a lot yeah, of people who like actually did it. The core understanding of religion teaches you that they are better than everyone else, that if you do not follow God, you are dead, you are condemned. In essence, what they teach you, fear, guilt, hatred and what they do is hey the end of the world is coming let's sit on our ass and do nothing god is going to come and he's going to change the world instead of educating our youth and teaching them that it is us really that makes the necessary changes it is us that actually has a decision what we do what uh, what we should and what we should not do but what we do is we leave it up to god so they sit on their ass basically yeah, what well, that? <laughs> I can. You can't make a blanket statement. Like even for me, like I'm, 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 I'm an elementary teacher. I don't sit on my behind on and beliefs. do nothing. With, it is I mean, based on. I just want to like give you an example of something that always really piques curiosity. In me. Sure. I saw this documentary about North Korea and what it's like to live in North Korea. Yeah. These people worship their leader. I know. They, they don't even have televisions in their house. They have a picture of their leader and they pray to this picture. I know. And they know this. And and I forgot how many hundreds of people who. All had they were blind because they just needed this really simple procedure to give their eyesight back. Yeah. American doctors came and they gave like 200 people back their eyesight. Oh, wow. The first thing they wanted to do when they took the bandages off their eyes was to see a picture of their leader. And one by one, each one of them fell to the floor in exaltation, crying, screaming, waving their hands, praising Kim Jong Il for right. giving them their eyesight back. Sure. And I grew up in the church and I saw these religious experiences of people throwing their hands in the air, crying to God. Mm -hmm. And here were these people having the exact same experience okay. to a picture of a ruthless dictator. Sure. Sure. And so, I just wonder, well, how do you know What's this? the difference? Physiologically, is your brain going through the exact same motion when you worship Jesus as these people are worshiping their dictators? Because I couldn't tell the difference. And it's how do you know that you're not tricking yourself? And when you feel this feeling of forgiveness, how do you know that you're not just forgiving yourself? Well, okay, two, two, two good questions, right? Two great questions. You asked some really good questions, and... and um, I don't definitely don't have all the answers for them, but but none of those questions make me doubt. It's just a quote from the Bible. This is straight from the Bible. That other one says, "What kind of God you got?" I don't know. You're running them down, so you can't believe in them. Well, not that God. I mean, if you were living in Egypt and this God from this foreign nation came and kills your firstborn son. Wouldn't you be pretty upset? Especially because it wasn't your fault, it was the, you know, the president's Arrows. fault. The president made a political decision that wasn't friendly. Didn't we kill God's son? I didn't. Did you? Yes, we all did. Oh, I didn't. I was we all did. We're all sinners. Can you prove that? Can you put me there at the place of the crime? The Bible. It points to this. This is happening right now today. That's our if point. We are machines, and if we weren't it here, matter. you would have just been going home to your little TV and your little coffee. You know what? We're so See? glad you came. Okay. I know. That's We're the point. We're so glad you came. I know. Did. Isn't it awesome? Are, it's just so much so fun. Good. It's We're like so glad you did. That's right. Because we can that's look at you personally. That's, that's the point. That's the point. And bring you before the same of God. That's right. We're just so excited. Thank you for being here. So that's